Well, top on the brief this morning is Justice Emeka, which of the Federal High Court in Abuja remanding 10 and bad governance protesters in prison. The judge remanded nine male protesters in Kujay prison while the female protester was remanded in Suleja. And also fixed September the 11th for trial and ruling on bail application by the protesters. This followed the arraignment of the protesters for alleged treason, mutiny, and intent to destabilize Nigeria, charges to which they pleaded not guilty following their participation in the August 2024 nationwide protest to end hunger and bad governance. The 10 persons who were arraigned before Justice Emeka and Witte are Michael Daramoye, also known as Lenin, Ademi, Abayomi, Suleiman, Yekubo, Baolua, Simon, and Angel Innocent. Others are Buhari Lawal, Monsieur Sadiq, Basha Bello, Narudin Hamis, and Abdul Salam Zubeiro. In the meantime, the Nigerian police has declared a British national Andrew Wine and a Nigerian Lockheed Obia wanted for allegedly plotting to overthrow the democratically elected government of President Balatino. But the first spokesperson, Muyua Dejobi, accuses the British national of building a network of sleeper cells to cause chaos and topple the government. The police alleges that preliminary findings suggest they orchestrated and funded violent protests, disseminated false information, and engaged in a plot to overthrow the government of the day. According to the police, the wanted suspect, Mr. Wine, also known as Andrew Povich, and his coordinator, Obia, had fled the country. Investigations have identified a foreign mercenary, Andrew Wine, also known as Andrew Povich, or Drew Povey. The man has many identities. A British national who built a network of sleeper cells to topple the government and plunge the nation into chaos. He rented a space at the labor house in Abuja for an Ivor Valley bookshop and established stars of nation schools as a cover for his subversive activities. Documentary evidence and confessions revealed that Andrew Wayne issued directives, monitored progress, and provided finance and operational guidance to achieve all constitutional regime change in Nigeria. He mobilized and deployed several billions of Naira to his Nigerian collaborators urging them to mobilize the public to violently storm police facilities and military barracks, anticipating a bloodbath that would instigate international condemnation of the Nigerian government. Well, that's the police uh, speaking about Mr. Andrew Wine, but Andrew Wine has a different version of events. He said he's not a fugitive, he's not a terrorist, and all of these allegations are false. His wife also spoke to the media exclusively to channels, television, saying all of this is false. She was alleging uh, that somebody who the man, the British man is owing, is responsible for this trumped up charges against him, against her husband. And he says he's ready as long as his safety is guaranteed to answer to any questions that the Nigerian government has against him. So we needed to bring that up, uh, bring you up to speed with the response of Andrew Wine and his Nigerian wife. Let's now head to southern Nigeria, uh, where at least 10 travelers have been feared kidnapped by sea pirates along the Boni Water, Boni Port Harcourt Waterway in River State in southern Nigeria. Though details are quite sketchy, the district chairman, Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, River State District, Israel Waribo, uh, Pepo confirmed the incident and number of victims. When contacted, the police public relations officer told our correspondent that they are aware of the 10 people that have been kidnapped, but that the Commission of Police, Alatunji Disu, has mandated his deputies and the DPOs in the area to make sure the victims regain their freedom as soon as possible. Let's also bring you uh, some other stories and tell you that uh, there, are, there are proposals to, among other things, a slash in the salaries of legislators by 30% and that of the executive by 40% and the need for the presidential, national assembly, governorship 
and state houses of assemblies elections will be conducted in a single day to reduce cost. This was proposed by the Joint Committee on Electoral Matter during an interactive session uh, with judiciary and political parties led by the chairman of the Senate Committee on Electoral Matters, Senator Shara Fadin Ali, on the National Assembly Review Amendment of the Electoral Act 2022. Among the 35 proposals presented by IPAC Chair during the three-day retreat, the political parties maintained that the appointment of the Independent National Electoral Commission Chairman should no longer be the responsibility of the executive, rather it should be advertised to interested parties. I therefore crave your indulgence to use this very rare opportunity to share with the Joint Committee those areas that you refer to as being contentious and in need of review. It will interest you to know that this is the first in a series of consultations. And now to more stories in what is perceived by the APC in Plato State as a continuous marginalization of their members in the State House of Assembly is causing unease as they call on the Speaker to inaugurate the remaining six members immediately. Speaking during the stakeholders' meeting at the party secretaries in just the party chairman, Rufus Baturi, an immediate governor of the state and senator representing Plateau South, Simon Lalong, condemned the action of the speaker for not respecting court orders which directed him to inaugurate APC members of the state assembly. In business news, the President Bulletin has approved the appointment of Dr. Mansa Mukta as the chairman and Dr. Olashukbo. Lucy as the Managing Director, Chief Executive of the Bank of Industry. Also appointed are Mrs. Ifo Oma Uzo Akpala, Mr. Shakara Oma, Mr. Hussein Efiong, Ms. Mebel Ndagi, and Mr. Rutubi Akinde as Executive Directors, among other non-executives, as well as independent non-executives. In a statement by Presidential Spokesman Ajurin Galale, the new chairman, Mr. Mukhtar's career spans decades in finance, international development, public service, and academia, as the president urges the appointees to accelerate industrialization. On international scene, the United Kingdom has said it is suspending some export licenses for military equipment to Israel. And that's coming from the Foreign Secretary, David Lamen, who believes that there is clear risk that items exported to Israel might be used in violation of international humanitarian law. It says around 30 to 500 or 350 licenses have been suspended, but he emphasizes it is not an arms embargo. Uh, Israel's Defense Minister Gallant says he is deeply disheartened by the decision, while Foreign Minister Israel Kat says it sends a problematic signal to Hamas. And in sports news, Nigerian striker Victor Sime is heading to Turkey as after Galatasaray reached an agreement with Italian side Napoli to sign an African Footballer of the Year on a season-long loan before the Turkish transfer window closes. The Nigerian forward, who has been informed for Napoli, is now the subject of a potential loan move to the Istanbul base club. And after a fallout with the club following a failed transfer to Saudi and Chelsea on transfer deadline day, football journalist Gianluca Di Marzio uh, reported negotiations were quite underway, uh, making all of this possible. And so Simen should be heading, or is already there, in Galatasaray. Well, we talked about this at the beginning of the show. We wish Osimhen the very best. But those are the stories we've been tracking for you in the last 24 hours. It's going to form part of our conversation for the decade.